Welcome to the Chickadee Knitting Club Knitting Podcast. My name is Caitlin, and this is a podcast where I share what I'm knitting, what I'm crafting, and I take you along on my journey to become an occupational therapist. This video is a long time coming. I've been trying to film it since like April or May, um, but just life kept getting in the way because it was a very big year for me and that's kind of what I needed to put my attention towards and that's okay. In April, I finished my last clinical rotation for occupational therapy school. In May, I graduated occupational therapy school. In June, I took the entire month to study for my national board certification exam. And in July, I took my exam and passed it so that in August, I could start my very first occupational therapy job in a rural school district and I have just been loving every minute of it. As far as knitting goes, I have very little to share, um, and that was kind of my goal. At the beginning of the year, I really wanted to knit less and explore other creative outlets a whole lot more. So I did just that. I do have one finished object that I am really excited to share with you. This is the Kavat Kavat sweater from uh, Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. It has a lot of different elements to it. There is a color changing yoke, it's got bobbles, it's got lace, it's got lots of different textures um, and visual interest that I had such a blast knitting um, and it was one of those projects where the closer I got to the end, the more I was dreading finishing it because I was just having an awesome time. I loved nearly every minute of knitting this. I used two different yarns in this sweater. The main one, which takes up the majority of the sweater, is called West Yorkshire Spinners, the Croft Erin Tweed in the color Westerwick, which is a beige base with a lot of different um, sort of strawberry, uh, strawberry shades. It's got lots of pinks, maroon, orange, um, almost purpley reds. Um, it's got a lot to it and is very beautiful. For the contrast color, um, for the color work, some of the bobbles, and on the hems, I selected um, Kelbor Woolen's Scout Yarn in the color Strawberry Heather. And it is exactly what it says on the box. It's sort of a strawberry shade um, of pink with just a little bit of color variation. So it looks like a solid color compared to um, all the different colors in the Westerwick yarn. But um, yeah, it's just very subtle, very heathery shades of deep, deep reddish pink um, and slight purples in there. So when I first saw these yarns together, I it was just, a match made in heaven and it filled me with so much joy just to see them together that I almost didn't even want to start the sweater because they just look so good next to each other in the skeins. But also the more that I looked at them, the more that I just could not wait to do something with them and I scoured um, Ravelry and Instagram to try to find the perfect sweater 
and I truly think that this was it and I am very pleased with how it turned out. The actual pattern itself is supposed to be drapier, whereas this sweater that I made is a little more form-fitting. And even though I like my sweaters to have a little bit more drape, um, I still think that it is gorgeous the way that it is. Um, and yeah, I love it. And I wore it to school picture day because I work in a school district and so staff also get pictures and so in the yearbook and on my little name badge you can see me wearing my dreamy strawberry sweater as I call it. I have two works in progress although the first one is a gift knit for a friend so I won't be mentioning it here but the other is one for myself that I um, have been taking a really long break from just because it became very repetitive and tedious um, and so I just needed a break, but I still am really excited for how it's going to turn out. This is what I have so far. Um, I have quite a few of these strips, but it's going to be a checkered sweater vest that I hope to have finished so that I can wear it to school on Valentine's Day. And so it has alternating squares of a darker raspberry pink with a lighter pink heart on the inside and a lighter pink square with the darker pink heart on the inside. The yarns are Barocco Vintage in Ruby and Rhubarb, and just kind of like the last sweater, I hadn't really had an idea for what to do with them when I bought the yarn. I just saw the yarn together and thought that the color combo really, really fit very well, and I wanted to do something special with it. And so this is not based off of any pattern. It's just an idea I had in my head, and I'm kind of drafting it as I'm going along. Um, the idea is that I'm going to be, I'm going to have these strips of alternating checks. Let's see if I can find, yeah, here's one. Um, that I'm just going to stitch together, um, like with the mattress stitch or something, and then just form it into a vest shape. Um, yeah. And so I've really only made enough to form the back. Um, I've yet to figure out how the sides and the front are going to go, but I have a sketched out idea. I've got buttons on the front. I haven't decided which yarn I'm going to have as a ribbed border around everything. Um, but like I said, um, it's kind of repetitive and tedious. And when I was originally making it, that's what I needed. Just a nice, um, predictable pattern with just a little bit of variation because you're going back and forth um, between the two colors um, to give it some excitement but after a while it just became monotonous so um, after I finish the gift knit for my friend I want to go back to this and hopefully it will um, it will feel new and fun. I did very well on my knitting goal this year. My goal to knit less and explore other things more but this upcoming year, I really just want to dive right back into knitting. I kind of missed it. Now that I'm no longer constantly in motion, moving back and forth from my hometown to college, to my hometown, to grad school, back home, um, I've uncovered some of my old um, Island of Misfit knit projects that I now want to return to and hopefully finally finish those finish those off. Two of them that come to mind that I am really looking forward to are the J sweater and the downy woodpecker sock. Both of these projects I have all the yarn because I, I finished them but I finished them wrong and so they are just woefully incorrect is really the only way that I can describe them. Uh, for instance the uh, the woodpecker socks um, was actually my very first test knit. I was test knitting them for um, the designer, um, but unfortunately, I had never. They're they're top down socks, um, and I had never knit anything other than a toe up sock. And I followed the pattern as best as I could. Um, and when I finally finished the toe, I realized that there was about like two inches of actual foot on the bottom of the socks. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a mess. <laughs> and um, same with the um, J sweater. I knit it exactly as it was supposed to be. I tried it on and it was very 
poorly misshapen. And when I looked back at the pattern, it turns out I had used the completely incorrect needles and gauge for everything. So going back to the drawing board on both of those and we're gonna actually do them right this time. And I think it's gonna be fun. Both of them are so much my style and I really want to be filling my closet with things that I've made. Um, I know that I have my OT job, I know what I can wear to it, and I know what sort of things I can add to my wardrobe to really suit the work that I do and like my personal style and all that stuff. So yeah, we're just gonna have fun with it. I'm really excited. I have one other knitting project planned for the new year, and it's one that is very near and dear to my heart um, for lots of different reasons. Now that I have graduated from occupational therapy school and I'm no longer living in the city where I went to OT school, I feel very comfortable sharing that for two years I lived in Portland, Maine. And for three months during one of my clinical rotations, I lived in Aroostook County, Maine, which is very, very far north. It is extremely rural. Um, parts of it are just plain uninhabited. Um, and we, I was so close to the Canadian border um, that I got a clearer radio signal for French Canadian radio than for the actual like main state public radio. It was an adventure beyond my wildest dreams. I can't, I want to go back so bad. And it was a very formative time for me as a professional. And so um, kind of who I am as an OT sort of is ingrained with um, living in Maine. Yeah, I have very fond memories um, and I miss it a lot. And so when I went up to, so I had moved back to my hometown to do my second clinical rotation in the school district where I grew up, which was wild as well. Um, but when I went back to Portland for my graduation, I went back to the Knit Wit yarn shop, um, which I frequented quite frequently while I lived there. And I got myself some of this yarn. I was really torn on what yarn to get because I knew that it might be my last time ever that I was there. Um, hopefully not, but definitely the last time that I would be getting yarn from Maine in a very long time. And so I was very indecisive until I found this skein. It is by Jaeger Spun um, from Springdale, Maine, Springvale, Maine, in the colorway Powder Blue um, in their base called Presque Isle. And Presque Isle is where I spent my very first clinical rotation actually practicing as an occupational therapist. So yeah, like I said, extremely formative for me. And the skills I learned there are the very foundational skills that I continue to use in my practice today. So um, yeah, Presque Isle means so much to me. So I had to get this yarn. It is just the softest, it's the softest yarn. Um, it's 100% um, super wash. It's um, bulky yarn, um, but it's in a very, very soft sky blue that I adore. And I got enough to hopefully make um, a sort of scrappy hobbit ish sweater vest. Um, I like vests. I like turtlenecks. I like wearing vests over turtlenecks. So yeah, that's my plan for this and I can't wait to start it. As far as the Chickadee Knitting Club, the actual YouTube channel where I film and post uh, knitting tutorials, that has definitely been on the back burner um, for a while. It's been a year if not more since I actually uploaded a tutorial even though I've got plans and I have filmed um, some material for another season of the Chickadee Knitting Club where we look at like increases, decreases, knitting in the round, all this stuff to take knitting to the next level um, but I just haven't had the time or the energy um, to make that a possibility so will that happen in the new year? We'll see. I can't say. Last year I wanted to create a whole new season um, and that didn't happen and that's okay. So we'll see if 2023 is the year for season three of the CKC. So we'll see. 
And that is all that I have to share. Um, I would love to hear what your knitting plans for the new year are. What if you, what if any projects you have either on your needles in, that you have in mind and whether any of them have a lot of significance to you, kind of the way that my plans do. Um, yeah, let me know all that. And until next time, stay warm, stay cozy, stay safe and keep on knitting and have a beautiful, restful new year. I'll see you around.